right, Algebra 2 beers. Here's your Unit 5 practice test. Let's go. So first of all, it says multiply. As you can see, we have conjugates. And in class, if you notice that there are conjugates, you can fool. You don't have to FOIL. So, square root of x times the square root of x is just x. Negative 4 times positive 4, negative 16. Now, if you went outside and inside, those would just cancel. So, there you go. Here, these are not conjugates, so you have to FOIL it x times x is x squared, outside minus 2x, inside minus 2x, negative 2, negative 2 is 4. Go ahead and add like terms, and leave your answer in simplest form always. All right, let's go to number 2. Simplify the expression. Well, first of all, you're going to be tempted to cancel these out, but in class we discussed why you cannot do that. So really, your target is to get the radical out of the denominator by multiplying by the conjugate of the denominator. That's the only thing that works. And if we do that to the bottom, we have to do the same thing to the top. So on the bottom, we can flip because we have conjugates just like this. 4 times 4 is 16. Negative square root of 2 times a positive square root of 2 is minus 2. The roofs fly off. So the denominator ends up being the easy part. The numerator we have to FOIL. So we get 12 plus 3 square root of 2 plus 4 square root of 2. And then the roofs fly off. Square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. Add like terms. 12 plus 2 is 14. 3 square root of 2 plus 4 square root of 2 is 7 square root of 2. Now if you notice, if I wrote this a little bit differently, a little more organized, your answer would be like that. But if we look at this, and this, and this, we notice, and I don't know if I covered this in class, but this is Mimi's heart, or the heart, which we can break that up into two fractions and then reduce that. So that'd be 1 plus 7 fourteenths is 1 half. So it's 1 squared to 2 over 2. That would be the simplest version of this. Now another student might just divide that by 7, 2, divide that by 7, 1, divide that by 7, 2. So this would be another variation of this that I say they're equally simplified. So either one of those would work. Number three, cubic root piece by piece. Now 125 can be written as 5 times 5 times 5. So negative 125 can be negative, negative, negative. So if we just focus on that we get a negative 5 to pop out. Now remember, we take the power of the exponent, or the power of the radicand, if they're variables, divide it by the index, so 9 divided by 3, I'll show my work, it's like this, and then x, 12 divided by 3, if we simplify that, negative 5 y cubed x to the fourth. Done. Number four, in class I said if you have an exponent that's a fraction, remember that that's the index. So, and that's the best place to start because we want our numbers getting smaller before they get bigger. The fourth root of 16, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, if you notice that, that, adds, that makes 16, so it's 2. And then we cube it, and that would be 8. We definitely don't want to go 16 cubed and then figure out the fourth root of that. That would be awful. Number five, if the volume of a cube, this cube right here, is found by the formula, volume is x cubed, so that's x times x times x. What is the length of one side, x, of the cube if the volume is 26 cubic inches? So we have this problem where it's 26 equals x cubed. 
Now how are we going to figure out what x is? We got to take the cubic root of that side and the cubic root of that side. Now how do we do that with our calculator? Well here we go. So if we recall, there's an invisible one there and we can rewrite it or rethink it as 26 to the one-third power. There is no perfect cubic root of 26, so we've got to resort to our calculator. And I know that one-third is 0.33, so I'm just going to go 26 raised to the 0.33 power. And I get approximately 2.93. That's the side of the cube. Now if I wanted to, I could go 26 raised to the 1 third power and you can see you're going to get something slightly different because we rounded the top one but didn't round the bottom one so this one's probably more accurate so 2.96 but we're just trying to get in the ballpark there okay number six solve it well you can see you can start by dividing both sides by two so x to the fifth equals 32 and if we think for a second, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that's 4 times 4, which is 16. So if I add one more, I get 32. So I know that x is 2. And there we go. All right, this next one's an algebra special. A small cube has volume 101 cubic feet. Its side length is 1.7 feet less than the larger cube. So I know this is x. This has to be x minus 1.7. I'm going to put that in parentheses so I think of it as one thing. Find the volume of the larger cube. But notice we know the volume of the smaller cube. So we take this value and we know that if we cube this side, it's going to give us 101 cubic feet. So to get home from there, we got to take the cubic root of that side, the cubic root of that side. So we get x minus 1.7 equals, now here comes our calculator again. So I'm going to take 101, raise it to the 1 third power, that was more accurate, 4 point, we'll call it 4.66. Then we have to add 1.7 to both sides. x is... 6.36 but but wait it says find the volume the volume of the larger cube so we know that 6.36 so now we have to cube that to figure out the volume of this larger cube 6.36 raised to the third power 257.26 so the volume is 257.26 cubic feet, if we want to be precise. Okay, number eight changes gears on us. The graph of f of x equals the square root of x. Now there's a lot of ways to figure this out. Using this, we know that there are no negatives because you can't have a square root of a negative that doesn't exist. So this graph starts at zero. So the square root of zero is zero. We're going to start right there. And then if we grab some others that just work real nice, one, square root of one is one, four, square root of four is two. We get the idea. One, two, three, four. Now this is supposed to be one of your parent functions, something you're slightly memorizing or maybe you have it memorized. But it says it's translated left 4, down 6. So we're just going to obey that. Get out a different marker here. Left 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, down 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's the locator point. Just moved right there. This is right 1, up 1. So I'm going to go right 1, up 1. And this is right 4, up 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, up 2. So we can get a really accurate-ish drawing. It's not perfect. There's the sketch. What's the equation? Well, the equation would be f of x. Well, it'd be a new 
g of x, can't use f again, because that's already been used by that, equals the square root left 4 would be x plus 4, down 6 would be minus 6. It could be written as negative 6 plus the square root of x plus 4 as well, so be looking out for that. Alright, what's the range? That's talking of the green one. Well, if we know what that point is, which we do, left 4 down 6, it's negative 4 down 6. Range is our how low does it go to how high does it go. So how low does it go? Negative 6. So y is greater than or equals negative 6, because it does get there, but it's less than infinity, because it just keeps going up and up and up and up and up. Domain. Well, that's how far left does it go all the way to how far right does it go. Well, it gets to negative 4, so x is greater than or equal to negative 4, and less than infinity because it goes to the right forever. This green one goes to the right forever. There's number 8. Circle the real numbers. Well, remember, if you have an even number in here, that means there's no negatives. If it's an odd index, you can have positives or negatives. So you see there's an invisible 2 there with a negative and a radicand. So that's like, nope. This is, yep. Because if that's a cubic root of a negative, that's okay. Even number, negative radican, no. Square root of zero is just zero, so yes. Okay, number 10. So here's some uh, values given to you just to kind of get you off to the good start here. Um, I picked values that just work. Um, but if you're on a test or something and they don't give you a table like this, remember you can always create your own table. But... Let me go ahead and stick negative 32 in here, negative 4 in here, 0, and not burn up the whole uh, video here. I'm just going to fill it in. Okay, so I'll do one of these for you. If I put negative 4 in here, I get 2 times negative 4, which is negative 8, which is the cubic root of negative 8, which is negative 2. So that's why negative 4 corresponds with negative 2. And I plotted the point right here, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 2, 0, 0, 4, 2, now these numbers, they work out nice, but there's no way we can fit them on this graph. So I just kind of said, well, 32 would be way out here, and it'd be, well, I'm 32, positive, way out here, and then it's up 4. So I know it's going to work its way up as we go. So that's a real uh, general sketch <clears throat> of this graph. Is it increasing or decreasing? Remember, you got to go on it left to right. So you picture yourself on a roller coaster left to right, as you can see, you'd be going up and up and up and up and up. So that would be increasing. All right, let's go on to this one. Simplify. Well, we got some oil and water here, so we cannot mix those, so we write it like that. Now, a little trick here. I can rewrite this as the cubic root of 7 and the cubic root of 7. And remember, if I've got three of these, the roofs fly off. Technically, I'd get the cubic root of 343, but we talked in class that if you have three of a kind in the cubic root world, then the roots fly off. So it'd be plus, I forgot the negative, minus 7. And those are not like terms, so you're done. These, you just have to break down individually. So 4 and 5, 2 square root of 5. This is 106, so that's minus 10 square root of 6. This is 25 and 5, so that'd be minus 5 square root of 5. And notice we got a pair of like terms, 2 of them minus 5 of them, negative 3 of them. And these are not like terms, so you're done. Now we're into the cubic root world. So cubic root, what's a perfect cubic root that goes into 250? 125. How many times? 2. What's a perfect cubic root that goes into 16? That'd be 8. How many times? 2. This would be 5 cubic root of 2 minus 2 cubic root of 2. My answer is 3 cubic root of 2. Now, you guys aren't used to throwing that little 3 in there. Make sure you do that because it's a cubic root problem. Okay. 
So if f of x equals the square root of x, h of x equals 4 minus x, what is the domain of this composite function? So we take h of x, 4 minus x, we put it in like this, which means find the function defined by f, here it is, and put all of this in for x. So we get the square root of 4 minus x. Now remember, we cannot have negatives down here. So that means that whatever that is must be greater than or equal to 0. That's how you say it can't be negative. Subtract 4, subtract 4. Negative x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Got to multiply that by negative 1, which means we've got to flip the inequality. That means any number less than or equal to 4 would work for this. Pick one. 0. Put a 0 on there. 4 minus 0 is 4. Square root of 4, it works. Pick something not less than or equal to 4, like 5. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. Square root of negative 1 is not possible. So that is a, looks like that's our good answer.